Hello there, people of the internet. So, Dhruv Rathi has done a video titled, Is India Becoming a Dictatorship? As of recording this, it has 19 million views and it has caused uh, much furor on the internet. So, I thought I will do sort of an analysis of a his video and then I wanted to also bring in the counterpoints that have been made. So in this video, I'm just going to take you through just salient points of what Dhruv Rathi has said. Then I'm going to show you what Shekhar Gupta has said on the video. And then there was an extensive response given by Dilip Mandal uh, to his video. So we are going to go through that as well. And by the end of it, I will also give my opinion on is India becoming a dictatorship? Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? I don't know. Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. So yeah, let's go. So this is the video. It is in Hindi. I will leave a link below. You can go watch it yourself. I'm just going to give you the salient points of what Dhruv has said. So of course, his basic question is, is India becoming a dictatorship? The question is important. Is India becoming a dictatorship? He is not really claiming India is a dictatorship, but he's asking the question. Is it rhetorical that you decide? It was posted 10 days ago and is currently sitting at 19 million views when I record this, as I pointed out earlier. There are other big influencers that have been also reacting to this video. For example, Abhi and Niu, they have said, the people who don't vote for their leaders who have left the country for better alternatives, who pay taxes in other countries, who use Indian brands, sell to Indian consumers, take that money and travel the world, should not make videos about who we should vote for. That's it. That's all I have to say. So basically they are saying that if you are uh, not living here, you have no opinion about it. Obviously pointing towards Dhruv Rati. Okay then. Here's the thing. You know, this is a classic technique of attacking the messenger rather than dealing with the message. So if the message makes you uncomfortable, the best thing you can do is start questioning the messenger. So if the messenger is discredited, if the messenger uh, is, is sort of told to be the villain, then whatever they say doesn't matter, right? So this is an attempt at that. It's a sad attempt, but it is still an attempt at that. And it is not true because as an Indian citizen, I am allowed to express my opinions. Yes. But as an Indian citizen, I'm also allowed to express opinions on what is happening around the world. Why not? So similarly, even if Dhruv Rathi doesn't live here, he has an opinion about India and the rest of the world. So let him say it. He's not really telling you who to vote for either. As I said, the question was important. Is India becoming a dictatorship? That has not been addressed here. What they have assumed is that he is asking you not to vote for Modi. He has not said that in the video. So this attempt by Abhi and New is kind of sad. It is sad. Just saying it. So back to the video. Just briefly telling you what all he has said in this. It starts with what is a democracy to establish a base of what is a democracy. He says that even North Korea claims that it is a democracy, but is it? It's not. Yeah if you don't know that already. Then he points out how in recently in the Chandigarh mayor elections, the presiding officer tampered with votes and did election fraud straight up. It was being recorded on CCTV cameras and we all saw how fun that was. The Supreme Court had to intervene and stop the whole thing. Then he moves on to raising some doubts about the EVMs. He quotes a bunch of reports from past and recent past uh, about unknown people being found with EVM machines and some signs of maybe shenanigans going on during the elections. Then he raises doubts on the election commission itself. He questions their impartiality. He points out that their actions during the election campaigning has been selective at best. Action has been taken against opposition party leaders for violating rules, but not against BJP candidates for violating similar rules, especially the prime minister, also Amit Shah and Yogi Adityanath. He also talks about how there is a new law which the parliament has passed recently where the appointment of election commissions will be handled by the prime minister as a committee, but headed by the prime minister. So prime minister will appoint the election commission. Overall asking whether the election commission is free and fair or not. Then he moves on to point out that BJP is currently the richest party 
thanks to electoral bonds. Electoral bonds has been mm, declared unconstitutional recently by the Supreme Court, but it was active since 2018 till 2024. So the amount of money that BJP has managed to collect during that time has made them the richest party we have I think till date in history, it is the richest party, political party. Compared to that, other political parties did not get as much donation and therefore there is not a level playing field anymore. What this intense amount of money also allows the BJP to do, allegedly, is rampant horse trading. We see it happening in Maharashtra, we see it happening all the time in multiple state governments where there is this Operation Lotus going on, whatever that means. Resort politics. Resort politics. Dhruv also talks about the functioning of the ED and IT and how they have been weaponized against opposition members. First, in during elections or in speeches, some leaders are pointed out and said, Oh, look, these opposition people are corrupt. Then these corrupt people have actions taken against them and then suddenly, somehow, magically, they switch parties and join the BJP. After they join the BJP, they're given a clean chit. People call this the BJP washing machine and it is active very much in the last few years. Then he talks about the misuse of governors. Governors intervene with the functioning of the state government. They withhold laws. They don't clear files. They pick public fights with chief ministers and other ministers. You have seen that happen in multiple states already. Then he zooms out and talks about the role of media in this democracy. He raises doubts about its functioning. How the current mainstream media, especially the TV media, but also newspapers, Hindi newspapers especially, how they keep praising the BJP while constantly maligning opposition parties, dissenters, protesters, and Anyone and everyone who speaks against Shri Sir, Supreme Leader, Adarniya, Supreme Supreme, uh, Adarniya, Narendraji Modi ji. Finally, he makes two points. One is how democracy is not to be confused with majoritarianism. Just because a majority wants something to happen doesn't mean that the minority has to be okay with it and doesn't mean that it has to be done because it would make the minority uncomfortable. It will take away their rights. Uh, it, will, it will affect their citizenship. And the second larger point he makes is how Modi government doesn't like any kind of dis Sent. They do everything in their power to suppress those who are asking questions and at the same time they are not interested in answering questions that are asked of them. Prime Minister hasn't done a single press conference since, since coming to power. All the interviews that he gives are pretty much like scripted bullshit. Aam khate ho, batwa rakhte ho, all that kind of thing. So. It might appear that they're, oh, look, they're being questioned and being answered, but they're never really asked the tough questions. All the tough questions are reserved for the opposition. And of course, you know how debate TV works these days. Anchors are basically spokespersons of the ruling party. So yeah, that was the overall video that uh, Dhruv did. And then there has been intense reaction to it. I mean, Abhi and you keeping aside, but there were videos done by a few people. There was an article, extensive article written by Dilip Mandal, which was then turned into a video also by the print. And of course, Shekhar Gupta also gave a comment. First, Shekhar Gupta. This is him taking a question from one of his uh, subscribers on print and they asked him what is his opinion about Dhruv Rathi's video. First off, he said that he hasn't really seen it because he's too busy. And then he said this. बहुत बातें ऐसी हैं जिनके ऊपर सवाल उठाए जा सकते हैं और जो मैंने सुना उन्होंने से सवाल उठाए हैं और हालांकि वो भारत में नहीं रहते हैं लेकिन फिर भी उनका ये वीडियो करना और भारत में देखा जाना और उसके ऊपर डिस्कशन होना कोई बहुत लोग उसके समर्थन में बोले बहुत उसके खिलाफ बोले एक डिबेट बनी उसके ऊपर और मेरे ख्याल दस लाख के ऊपर तो मैंने कल परसों देखा था लोग देख चुके तो ये दिखाता है कि अभी लोकतंत्र खत्म नहीं हुआ है तो लोकतंत्र में चुनौतियां हमेशा रहती हैं कभी ज्यादा होती है कभी कम होती है लेकिन अगर लोकतंत्र खत्म हो जाए तो ऐसी चीज चल ही नहीं सकती है यहाँ पे आप देखिए पाकिस्तान में हालांकि पाकिस्तान का उदाहरण सो फर्स्ट अप ही गिव आई मीन अगेन दिस इज लाइक अ वेरी ईजी आर्ग्यूमेंट टू मेक दट बिकॉज because Dhruv is able to make videos and people are able to see it doesn't mean that uh, points towards the fact that democracy isn't over because if democracy didn't exist then this video would not exist either 
this is a very uh, often used argument that you will see uh, against videos like this that uh, if you are talking about dictatorship if you are saying that oh look there are signs of dictatorship emerging again i point out to the first question that was asked is india becoming a dictatorship it doesn't say that india is a dictatorship is it moving towards it though is it moving towards autocracy are there signs that you can see which which are pointing towards the fact that yeah looks like we are going in that direction and it is bad when you have something like this happening it is basically a warning for you it is a warning for the audience that listen if we do not talk about this it will actually happen so yeah these kind of videos which dhruv rathi did are very important but the fact that they are out there doesn't mean that we are not moving towards autocracy if there are signs and patterns which point towards it look at it aur dusra pakistan ki democracy ya pakistan ka system hamare liye acha comparison ke liye nahi hai tulna ke liye nahi hai isliye main maafi chahta hu ki maine kaha lekin aap samjhe ki maine kyon kaha kyunki agar koi total dictatorship ho to aap dekhiye chin total so instantly uses pakistan example and then of course says that oh i shouldn't use pakistan example it's a very cheap thing to do but i will do it anyway chahti hai wohi aata hai to sabko pata hai wahan pe to ye matlab samasyaye hain पर ऐसी भी नहीं अगर इतना लोकतंत्र खत्म हो गया होता तो मैं भी बैठ के आपके सामने नहीं बोल सकता था सो हियर्स द थिंग देर हैव बीन रीसेंट लॉज विच वेर पास लिटरली मंथ्स अगो देर इज द टेलीकॉम बिल विच अलाउज द गवर्नमेंट टू टेक ओवर एंटायर टेलीकॉम नेटवर्क एंड इंटरसेप्ट मैसेजेस इवन द पोस्ट ऑफिस बिल वॉज पास वेर पैकेजेस कैन बी इंटरसेप्टेड एंड एसेंशियली सर्वेल्ड आई टी रूल्स हैव कम इन वेर देर आर लाइक इंटेंस क्लैम्प डाउन बींग put on social media platforms and people on the internet because that is where the little bit of dissent that we have right now is actually coming from so initially when modi ji came to power in 2014 internet was still mm, mm, it was like tiny you know a little bit of people were using it then jio came in the jio the jio days were insane because the data cost went down more people went on the internet and because tv media has stopped giving any sort of useful information they only raise your blood pressure and by screamy debates then there were people with some conscience left who are still willing to ask questions to the government who left and started their own channels or there were influencers in fact like me who came up on the internet used youtube to start building a profile of a journalist or people who ask questions or a commentator who is willing to challenge power now once the once the bjp started realizing that that is happening and how media tv media i guess the viewership is going down there are trends pointing towards it ad money is going away as well so once the government saw that happening they wanted to control that as well and now we are seeing signs of it there is a broadcasting bill that has been proposed which actually actually wants to shut down people like me ravish dhruv uh, whatever like dissenters in general right there are people who on the internet who are dissenting and the government is looking for ways to clamp down on that as well the second example of this is how they have been sending twitter insane amounts of notices and asking them to take down content and accounts from the platform twitter actually gave a statement recently saying that we are helpless we are genuinely helpless but we want you to know that your government is asking us to take down content so this is a problem so the way this is dismissed the way you know oh, if i'm if i'm putting out video and everybody is listening to it then we don't have we, we, no problem but you have to point towards the fact that it might become a problem very soon it might there are literally moves being made in the last few months which is pointing towards this so basically his whole argument is that loktantra khatam nahi hua hai kyunki tum mujhe sawal puch sakte ho okay then moving on to dilip mondol so dilip mondol you can search him on the internet i don't want to attack him i don't want to attack the messenger i want to focus on the message so you can find out about him yourself and make your judgment but he wrote an article in the print which is called dhruv rathi is wrong if modi is a dictator why did he fail so often to get what he wants modi has never been one to bulldoze 
always stopping to rethink his decisions and face the resistance. Yeah, so this is the argument essentially that he's making that uh, because Modi hasn't been able to 100% do whatever he wants points towards the fact that uh, India is not a dictatorship. Again, I want to reiterate the first question where we started with is India becoming a dictatorship? Are we moving towards it? So the entire article starts with assuming that Dhruv Rathi is saying that Modi is a dictator. He is not. Not yet. So he has also done a video on this. I will show you that in a bit. But the main arguments that he's making in that videos which are spread all over are also in his article. The video is based on his article. So I'm just going to take you through it very quickly. So first he says that uh, the first thing that Modi ji had done when coming to power was they tried to pass a law to take over the judiciary. Take over in the sense they wanted the parliament to have a say on the appointment of judges. What happened is that they made a constitutional amendment, the Supreme Court came in and then they scrapped the whole thing saying that it's unconstitutional and kept the appointment powers to themselves, which is a collegium system. That is basically what happened. So his first point is that, oh, the first law that he tried to pass, the Supreme Court struck down. So democracy, right? Then he says that, look, farm laws, farm laws. So farmers were able to protest and then the farm laws were taken back. So that means that he, he listens to people. Again, it doesn't completely ignores the fact that the way the law, laws were passed in parliament was atrocious. Debates were cut short. People were suspended. There was intense resistance happening from the opposition asking for division voting, especially in the Rajya Sabha. They were not allowed to vote on it. And it was passed amidst absolute freaking chaos. Completely ignored that, of course. But the argument that he's making is that after all of this is done, or after the protests happen, Modi ji came in and said, oh, let's, let's take it back, which means that he listens to people. Actually, it's the opposite, isn't it? If he would have listened to people, he would not have brought the laws in the first place. Yeah! Or pass them in a way that is completely against parliamentary democracy and the way a democracy is supposed to function. He also gives a similar example of the Land Acquisition Act. Land acquisition, oh, they were not able to pass it. Uh, they had to withdraw amendments, etc. Let me tell you a little bit about this. When the Modi government came in, they passed three ordinances imposing the Land Acquisition Act. Literally for a, over 160 days, the Land Acquisition Act was active without the permission of the parliament because it was passed as an ordinance. The Supreme Court had to come in and tell them, uh, guys, you can't just keep putting in ordinance after ordinance about the same thing and not take permission from the parliament. You have to pass it as a law. You can't have an emergency provision of the constitution being used to pass the same law because there is outrage, because people don't like it. That's not how it works. Modi government throughout its, you know, 10 years of existence now has been passing one ordinance after the other to pass laws which they know people would oppose where the opposition would come in and oppose which would cause a lot of problems. Citizenship Amendment Act. Again, the argument he's making is that, you know, the protests happened and uh, now the rules are not being made. So protests happened, so rules are not being made. Again, completely ignores the fact that why the protests happened in the first place. Because these laws were passed without talking to the people who it affects. And then after the protesters actually came to the ground, they were called uh, jihadis, biryani khate hai. There was intense amount of effort done to malign these protesters, the women in Shaheen Bagh. You remember that drama, don't you? Completely ignored, right? But what he says instead is that, look, uh, abhi tak rules nahi bane. So the law is there, but they haven't made rules. So, which means that they are listening to people. Why protest kyu hua tha? Why did the protest happen? Because people didn't like the laws. So if you would have spoken to the people before passing such laws, would the law be passed? No. If Modi was actually listening to the people, would he even bring in the law? No. Uniform civil code. The fact that they haven't been able to pass the uniform civil code. You know why they haven't been able to pass the uniform civil code? Because it's a bad idea. Also, implementing it will be a pain. 
His whole argument is that despite its long-standing inclusion in the BJP manifesto, the Modi government has never attempted to advance the Uniform Civil Code. This reluctance stems from apprehensions about opposition making the issue too contentious to handle. However, the Uttarakhand government recently passed a bill suggesting Union government may be gauging public sentiment, potential res resistance before introducing new legislation. A democratic approach, isn't it? So basically, according to him, the democratic approach is a state government passing the elections, seeing public sentiments, then maybe deciding whether, you know, uh, to bulldoze it in parliament after that. Gauging public sentiment. You know why, that, the, why this gauging public sentiment has happened? Because when there was, a, uh, there was news coming out that the government is considering uniform civil code, which has happened multiple times in these 10 years, there are actually leaders within the BJP tribal leaders, regional leaders who have opposed it. They have said that our traditions, our customs, our private things uh, will be subsumed under a uniform civil code. At least that is their fear. Therefore, this is a bad idea. That's why the BJP hasn't been doing it. Basically, they see that there might be dissent coming within their party if they do this. So maybe it's not such a great idea. Uh, women's Reservation, a project deferred. He's saying the Women's Reservation's implementation is contingent upon next census and subsequent delimitation for seat allocation, postponing its effectiveness till uh, at least the 2029 Lok Sabha elections. The government recognizes the contentious nature of this issue and understands that the process of building consensus must continue beyond the bill's passage through the legislative body. Uh, consensus has to be built before? A law is brought in or am I dumb? Am I, am I saying anything illogical that, listen, uh, guys, so yeah, so we thought, we thought like, you know, we should bring in this law now. Uh, what do you think? People respond. Okay. Uh, you have a problem with this, this, this. How about we do this, this, this instead? People respond. Okay. I feel like we will build some more consensus. How about this, this, this? People respond. It's like, okay, great. So I think we are 90% there. So let's put in a law in parliament and introduce it. Then MPs, opposition, all MPs, committees, they're like, ah, oh, guys, so this is what you proposed. This, this, this is what you proposed. Here is what we think. Uh, maybe we can make it better this way, that way, whatever it is. Then after all of that is done, it is a uh, debate is held in parliament. It is discussed and then amendments are put in by MPs. Then the government is like, oh, okay. Yeah, this, this seems okay. We are 90% there. Okay. 95% there, maybe 5% is still left, but fine. We will pass the law right now, but let's keep reviewing it with a committee. That is how lawmaking, policy making, basic policy making 101 works. What? Sir Dilip Mandal here is suggesting is that Allah to pass kar diya hai, but look at it now they are listening to people and he's saying the reason for that is they postponed it till 2029 20, elections they didn't postpone it because uh, you know oh they're listening to people no they postponed it because 2024 elections are now and the first list that they put out which is 195 members BJP 28 are women 28 so their 33 percent quota is lost. So women's reservation doesn't matter anymore to them because ticket distribution, while doing ticket distribution, they don't even give tickets to women. So they didn't want the 2024 plan to be affected. That's why they put in all these sort of conditions. But the BJP also wanted to be able to claim, oh, we are the ones who brought in women's reservation. Sure, we weren't, we aren't implementing it. We postponed it. We kicked the ball down till 2029 or forever. Maybe the next government that comes in, believe me, thoda aur time chahiye aur bhi kick kar dete Yeah, they haven't implemented it. They just wanted it as a signaling exercise. They wanted it as something that they can use in the elections narratively. And finally, the Ram Temple construction. Recent construction of Ram Temple in Ayodhya does not bear the Modi stamp. Seriously? Seriously? Like, he was literally there. <laughs> 20, 10 days before that, he was going from temple to temple, doing temple run. Even now he's doing it. He was there. He hosted the whole thing. The entire media was focused on it. Everybody's like, Ye jo Ram ko laye hai, hum unko what does that mean? That is literally a song, campaign song that the BJP has been using since the Supreme Court verdict. 
and now it is even more does not have a modi stamp the government waited for the supreme court's order before proceeding with the construction work it is also waiting for relevant courts to build temples in mathura and varanasi this approach marks a departure from bjp area atal bihari vajpayee Mar- murli manohar joshi during which the babri masjid was demolished in presence of top party leaders the bjp is far more law abiding under B- modi's leadership that is his conclusion overall from the ram temple because what is left to say honestly let's go to the video i'm just going to play a few parts of this not the entire thing it is a 35 minute video loktantra samvidhan aur chunav ko nikal dijiye kya narendra modi jahan hai wahan pahunch sakte hain bagair chunav ke again so he his point is that narendra modi modi became the prime minister he comes from a humble background uh, democracy is the only way that someone like him can become prime minister he comes from a, a lower class background lower caste he was not rich uh, he got where he is so can this happen if there is no democracy yeah but that happened before modi came to power right so are you saying that we were a democracy before but does that mean that modi is not trying to take us in the other direction it's a simple logic right so during democracy modi ji rises and comes to power wins after modi win is he still interested in keeping that system where someone like him can come up and challenge him maybe not maybe now he is thinking i made it so far but i will not let someone like me come up again and make it this far there have been enough news articles written about his uh, his fights with local bjp leaders his his specific fights with uh, with state level bjp leaders right after modi ji comes to power maybe he is not interested in letting anybody else take the same path even kya agar wo bjp ko chunav na jitwa paaye तो क्या उनको धक्के मार के ना निकाल दिया जाएगा उस पार्टी ने तो वाजपेयी को निकाल दिया मतलब लीडरशिप से एक तरह से 2004 में हार के बाद 2009 में हार के बाद आडवाणी को निकाल दिया तो नरेंद्र मोदी अगर वोट नहीं ला सकते हैं और चुनाव ना होता तो वोट नहीं लाते चुनाव की प्रक्रिया के इतने बड़े लाभार्थ थी मतलब उसका बेनिफिशियरी तो इससे बड़ा कोई है ही नहीं ना स्टीफेंस में पढ़े हैं ना सेंट जीवर्स में पढ़े हैं ना विदेश में पढ़े हैं ना उनका परिवार कोई अरबपति परिवार है ना कोई इंडस्ट्रियस्ट परिवार है ना खानदानी रईस है ना जमींदार है वो आदमी प्रधानमंत्री बन रहा है भारतीय लोकतंत्र चुनाव का चमत्कार है तो इसमें मतलब वो इमेज बहुत पावरफुल है कि वो लोग जब वो पहली बार 2014 के बाद संसद जाते हैं तो सिर झुका कर प्रणाम करते हैं ही इज गोइंग इन द डायरेक्शन व्हिच आई हैव डन एन एंटायर वीडियो ऑन व्हिच इज ओ मोदी जी व्हेन ही केम टू पावर फर्स्ट थिंग ही डिड इज ही वेंट एंड लाइक did pranam to the parliament but what did he do after that friends i've done an entire video on this you can check it out i will leave a link below he has completely destroyed the in- institution of parliament he has basically made sure bills are bulldozed through not a very good sign for a democracy he has made sure people can't vote when they ask for divisions not a good sign again he has suspended his his government and the speaker has suspended um more than 150 uh, about 150 mps in the last session alone and this has been happening for a few sessions opposition was just kicked out bills were passed 12 bill be- bills were passed in 4 days right before the last session ended not a good not, not exactly looking like a democracy anymore isn't it isn't it so him doing that thing in 2014 where he's like oh my god i respect the parliament so much doesn't mean that he's the same person 10 years later I am not the same person 10 years later. I don't think anybody is. Maybe Modi ji isn't. Maybe he came in thinking, "Oh, I will do democracy." And then 10 years later he's like, "I don't need democracy anymore. Everybody is just voting for me. Let's just continue this trend forever." Unko malum hai ki is ye institution hai isliye Narendra Modi hai. Wana Narendra Modi kya hai? ऐसे लोग घूमते फिरते चाय बेचते तेल बेचते पर उनके इंस्टीट्यूशंस को लेकर तो सवाल उठते हैं कि जो इंस्टीट्यूशंस जो है वो ठीक तरीके से काम नहीं कर पा रहे हैं इसका उदाहरण की तौर पर ही कि अमेरिका का लोकतंत्र और भारत के लोकतंत्र में कहा जाता है कि अमेरिका का लोकतंत्र महान इसलिए है क्योंकि वहाँ ट्रंप के साथ भी वो सवाल करने को फ्री है पर मोदी से सवाल करने को लेकर क्या फ्रीडम है उतनी भारत में जो इंस्टीट्यूशन की आप बात कर रहे हैं नहीं क्यों नहीं है आप इलेक्ट्रल बॉन्ड सरकार लाती है सुप्रीम कोर्ट गिरा देती है ये एन बी एक्ट लाते हैं कि हम जुडिशरी की नियुक्ति कैसी हो जुडिशरी गिरा देती है जुडिशरी तो हर बीच बीच में इनके फैसले को पलट देती है और उसका यादर करते हैं एनजेसी को दोबारा लाने की तो कोशिश नहीं की उन्होंने इंदिरा गांधी रहती तो क्या करते उस समय अगर ये एनजेसी को गिराती कोर्ट अगर गिराती तो बकायदा एक संविधान संशोधन लाकर उसको बोलती है ऐसी रेजी हम भैया ऐसा है कि हम एक एक्ट ला संविधान संशोधन करके आपके यहाँ से पॉल ले रहे हैं वन ऑफ द थिंग्स डूइंग ऑल्सो इन दिस वीडियो 
is that he keeps mentioning how Indira Gandhi was a dictator. Yes, she was. Nobody is denying that. She was literally a dictator. Where she was making constitutional amendments, she was changing the constitution, she was arresting opposition leaders, she was shutting down the media whenever she wanted. Yes, that emergency period is well documented as a dictatorial period in India. Do you use whataboutery of what happened then to prove that it is not happening now? Or should I just wait for the fact that, oh yeah, Modiji will now shut down the media, they will shut down uh, opposition leaders, they will kill entire free and fair process of elections. And then I will say, oh, now we are a dictatorship. Oh shit, oh, this is what it looks like. Is that what I'm supposed to do? Wait for it, yeah? In 1975, the 1970s and 80s period is a long time ago. During that time, we didn't have the internet. The way you could do dissent was very limited. Message spreading was just limited to a very limited uh, number of audiences. So am I supposed to go back to 1975, see how dictatorship was then and apply the same standards to now? How does that make sense? How does that make sense? So the whataboutery that you bring in here is extremely dangerous because in a way you are saying that, oh, because that happened in 1975 and the same things are not happening now means that it can't happen. It is, it is not going to happen or it is not moving to that direction. Again, I keep bringing up the first question. Is India becoming a dictatorship? That's a question. This is dictatorial हमने दो राठी के अपने वीडियो में कहाँ बोला कि dictatorial blatant dictatorial कार्य ये कांग्रेस की सरकारें ने सरकारों ने किया था उससे मिलता जलता उससे कम डिग्री का ही तानाशाही नरेंद्र मोदी की है तो उन्होंने कहा नहीं उन्होंने तो कहा नहीं 2014 से शुरू की so after this, he's bringing up a lot of instances from the past. The overall argument he's making is if Dhruv Rathi is making a video, is India becoming a dictatorship? He should have also mentioned how the Congress government also did dictatorship, how other leaders also tried dictatorship in India itself, and maybe even around the world, and then basically point out how this has come about and how Modi is doing less dictatorship than, than let's say, an Indira Gandhi. So he's making that sort of whataboutery area argument. Here's the thing, guys. There is value to understanding history. There is value to understanding history because we identify patterns of what we don't want. We, we have read about emergency. Some people have experienced emergency. Actually, some of the BJP leaders have experienced emergency. They have experienced that era of politics where there was blatant dictatorship. We have seen the patterns. Now, when we see similar patterns emerging in 2024 or even before, I mean, around this period of time, that is the point of history. We learn from it. We learn from what Indira Gandhi did and we try not to do it again. Because, uh, guys, did you remember this happened to you? BJP, uh, you were jailed. Uh, so please don't do it to other people now. Instead, the whataboutery argument that he makes is that, oh, Dhruv Rathi is the one talking about RV becoming a dictator. But he didn't mention Congress. He didn't go back in time and tell us about how that was more dictatorship, this is less. What, what good will that do? What good will that do? None of it. No, no good will come out of it. Because now, this is a warning right now. We have not gotten there yet. It is important that people are warned that we have been here before. Remember, don't do it again. Agencies of the agency, UPA, UPA, Congress ne apne sahyogi See, ko jail ke dala. He is still giving examples of how Congress misused ED and IT. How Congress misused all the things that he said. Media control. Wo bhi hai, bahut hai. Like all examples he's giving is like Congress ne ye kiya tha, Congress ne wo kiya tha. Uh, nobody talks about it anymore. And the thing is, again, because they have done it, we know how bad it can be. The BJP was elected, if I'm not wrong, I don't know, you tell me, in 2014. People elected for the BJP because they were pissed off with the Congress and the way they were running the country. They wanted change. They wanted BJP to not do the things that Congress has done. Instead, what we see is that BJP is also doing some things which the Congress has done, sometimes even worse. Rony capitalism 
now we have oligarchs everywhere media control by indira gandhi we have godi media right in our faces misuse of edit oh wow it has become an extortion mechanism now oh nice so now we can just ex allegedly extort businesses and make them donate to uh, our party through electoral but a uh, great 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 stuff happening now yeah see that's my point you can go endlessly in the past endlessly as long as recorded history will allow you or maybe even made up history before that mythology ki oh look uh, dronacharya eklavya ne ye kiya tha wo kiya tha now are we supposed to listen to you so how back will you go with what about it how back will you go history is written down so that you learn from the mistakes and try not to repeat them hopefully but then history does repeat itself if i'm pointing out hey guys oh look history is repeating itself please can we look at this it is happening again uh, and maybe be aware beware that this is where we are going someone like dilip mondol will come in and say that oh no look uh, it has happened before exactly it has happened before the okay you can go watch this entire video if you want uh, after this there is a lot of कांग्रेस ने ये किया कांग्रेस ने वो किया ये रीजनल पार्टी ने ये किया और मोदी जी इतना भी नहीं कर रहे हैं ओके इतना भी नहीं कर रहे हैं अभी बट हियर्स द थिंग गाइस आई हैव टू आल्सो ऐड अ कैवियट हियर नॉट अ कैवियट बट जस्ट एन ऑब्जर्वेशन देयर आर अ फ्यू काइंड्स ऑफ पीपल हु आर गिविंग ओपिनियंस राइट नाउ वन आर pro government pro establishment people who will always tell you that oh no everything is great democracy is functioning everything is great uh, what are you so worried about uh, look uh, see ambani wedding uh, so pretty look mark zuckerberg is coming look rihanna is coming watch 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 yeah pro establishment there would be anti establishment people like politically motivated agenda driven however you want to call it let's call them just a general anti establishment amorphous morb who will be one extreme who will say we are already a dictatorship look at the signs we are already a dictatorship this is an undeclared emergency indira gandhi declared emergency we are in an undeclared emergency there is that crowd also then there will be one crowd which will be in the middle i would say they are not centrists i'm just saying they are rational people now rational people are listening to these sides and also coming to a conclusion of what is happening i want to be in the rational crowd right now because i do think that we are showing tendencies of authoritarianism our government is showing tendencies of possible dictatorship are we there yet no should we get there also no the second part is important should we get no we shouldn't look at all the signs around you and you can see that inch by inch thoda 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 karke we are moving in that direction and that is a warning that needs to be given to everyone basically in a way saying yeah so i agree that congress has done this all these parties have done this etc but i kind of don't want it repeated i i don't think that should be repeated anymore because uh, we are in 2024 and uh, we need a better more mature democracy not 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 the shit show that we had before that is a rational argument and of course there is another crowd of people who are nihilist now when i say nihilism what i mean is that there are people without privilege who come from lower castes who have been constantly oppressed by whoever is in power honestly now dilip mondol here he is an ambedkar right and he speaks a lot about caste issues so i do see maybe some of his views are coming from that direction also which means that because he is from uh, that background he is saying neither did indira gandhi do de- do anything for us nor is narendra modi doing anything for us in fact nobody none of the leaders we have had in the last 75 years have actually done anything from my for my community or me our dignity is not sufficiently raised where we were expecting it to in fact it might be going backwards also if you come from that standpoint and then you say 
I don't give a shit. Let's burn this entire thing down. I completely empathize with you. I do. If you are coming from that direction, I empathize with you. At the same time, I do want to say that maybe nihilism is not the answer. Maybe talking about the current quote unquote democratic setup that we have or whatever is little is left of it and also highlighting the fact that all of it might not be left soon is also a good way to go about it. But that's just my opinion. We all have lived experiences. You do. I do. Yeah, we will all have our perspectives. I thought I should just give my perspective. Thank you for watching.